Hello there. In this video, we'll take a look at how to uh, set up your lab environment, which will consist of Docker image and a container and uh, VS Code. So before we even proceed with, you know, installing all of um, those utilities, I first kind of want to um, just go over what we will be doing in the steps to follow, just so that, you know, logically all of it makes sense. So you would be having some machine, right? Um, and that machine would be running some operating system. In my case, it is Mac OS. Yours might be you know, Linux or uh, Windows. Right? So the idea then is that you install an application on it called uh, Docker Desktop uh, or called just Docker. And then within Docker, what we'll do is we'll install uh, a Linux based image, uh, right? So this is called the image. And then this image would be consumed by something called a container, right? Uh, container. So the container essentially consumes the uh, image and um, yeah, that's about it. We can work with the container. And then on the side, we'll also install, uh, you know, uh, VS code and that's because uh, you know we would want to connect with the container and explore the files inside of it and uh, work with them so VS code then essentially will uh, you know enable us to connect with the container that's the idea so we'll see how to install VS code how to install docker how to start a contain uh, 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 an image in it and how to um, kind of create a container. Right, now I should also briefly mention that there would be a directory here on your host machine uh, called the C Ninja listings. And this is actually a Git repo, right? And this Git repo uh, on your host machine will show up within the container as the documents directory right and this will become a lot uh, clearer as we take a look at the details but this is like the high level map that i would want you to remember as we uh, move forward so let me now get this out of the way and uh, okay let's get rid of this so the first thing we want to do then is install docker and vs code so to install docker let's just go to docker.com right and from here um, at this point uh, we you will need to kind of select the operating system that you're running mine happens to be um, the mac os um, apple chip base so i'm going to install this variant but for windows you can go with this for linux you can go with this and if you have a Mac with Intel chip, then you can go with this, right? Okay, so let me go ahead and uh, download. Okay, so the download has started. Uh, in the meantime, let's just go to VS Code uh, and just search for VS Code and then head to download. And from here, again, uh, we kind of, uh, you know, have uh, options available to download for Linux, options available to download for Windows. Mine happens to be the Apple chip-based Mac OS, so I'm going to uh, download this. So let me just then go ahead and also download VS Code. Uh, it should start. Okay, VS Code is getting downloaded. Now what we can do is, let's go to the downloads directory, and we have both Docker and VS Code, let's just install Docker first. Uh, yeah, so I just double clicked on it and it opened this. I just have to drag it and drop it into the applications directory. And now, okay, Docker is installing. So now let's just come on the side, extract uh, the VS Code zip and uh, let's drag and drop VS Code into the applications directory right okay so looks like docker is installed and so is vs code we can go inside of the applications uh, directory and as you can see here vs code is available 
All right, and uh, as we move up, there should be Docker available somewhere. Did I go past it? Yeah, there it was. Docker is available here. So let's just do one thing. Let's just launch Docker. Uh, we can get rid of the browser right now. We don't need it anymore. Okay, it's a, it's asking me that Docker is an application downloaded from the internet. Uh, we are aware of that. We would want to open it. Okay, so once we open, okay, it shows up some agreement. We accept it. Um, then it says, okay, recommended uh, requires password. Okay, reward. Uh, I'll enter my password and uh, we'll proceed without signing in and you know, let's skip all the um, other things and um, okay one important thing to note here so this is the images thing that i was referring to you know earlier in the video and this is the containers thing and um, we'll see that you know once we are setting up we'll create an image and a container um, but we have some automation to do it so that'll take care of it we just have to kind of observe okay so let's get uh, this out of the way right so we have the docker running nice okay so now let's go back to our browser and then let's go to a, a repository that we wanted to download um so let's go to github.com slash in hyphen pajama slash c hyphen ninja hyphen list things right so let's go to and by the way all of these urls uh, for docker vs code and the c listings repository that would be available in the description below right so what will we are now on this repository and it kind of also guides through what we need to do and we'll exactly follow these steps in a while uh, out of this we have installed the docker and installed the vs code so let's get this repo on our local machine. So let's open up a terminal. Okay, let's open up a terminal. Yes, let me go to the downloads directory, right? And uh, yeah, so in the downloads directory, I'll do git, uh, git clone followed by the URL and I'll hit enter. And so this should download uh, uh, the C Ninja listings directory. We'll get inside of that. And let me do an ls here. So remember, I was mentioning about some automation. So this uh, setup.sh is the automation. Uh, essentially, it will do the Docker image creation and the container creation for us. And it will use the docker file um, uh, which is a script that essentially guides the automation on what it needs to do uh, to create the image and the container okay so now to launch the automation we just have to do bash uh, setup dot sh uh, it asks us whether or not we want to clear some cache I can just do a no. I typically do a yes. So let me do a Y. Right now, let's get this out of the way and bring uh, this on the side. So what's essentially happening here is um, the automation script is essentially fetching an image of Ubuntu, the operating system, um, then installing on top of that certain utilities and programs like the um, the compiler tool chain, the make utility, all of those. Um, and we kind of use those uh, utilities and programs to work with our examples. And what it'll then do after installing uh, is it'll create a user uh, by the name CNinja and essentially, you know, allow us a way, uh, kind of populate our local, something called the bash RC file um, to be able to use a command to connect with the image we'll we'll see all of that in a while um, so right now it's just downloading packages from the internet and updating that image let's give it a give it a minute maybe again this process uh, uh, will take different amount of uh, time depending on what machine and how fast your internet connection is 
a form it typically takes like one to two minutes uh, so let's just see yeah it's pretty much done and now you can just focus on here so we have um the image created here which is about 961 mb and then a container also created and both of them are uh, running and notice that the container uh, the c ninja linux uses the c ninja uh, ninja linux base which is the image so you can refer back to the diagram i drew earlier and uh, you know this is exactly what i had shown with the block diagram okay so now the container is created and the automation here has also exited but it has told us how to connect with the container right so what we are now going to do is we are going to follow these steps so it's asking us to execute bash first and then it is asking us to execute c ninja first so we can execute bash we've changed our shell to bash and then i'll type c ninja right and the moment i do that it kind of because we are logging into uh, the container for the first time it's asking me uh, to pick between um, you know the configuration of the zsh shell and uh, i'm going to just go ahead and pick uh, two just to have default settings so uh, again let me go here and type in two and done so right now at this point we are within uh, the documents directory and if you notice the contents here are same as um, the one we had inside of the repository right so if you check uh, all of these are same as all of these right and that's the point that i was trying to uh, you know mention in the diagram that i drew that there would be a directory the a directory that gets mapped onto um, the documents directory within the container okay so at this point then we are able to connect with the container and we are able to you know get inside of it uh, now to check whether or not everything is working correctly for you uh, what we'll do is we'll get into the test directory and uh, let me just maybe yeah, increase the font on this and get this right and center here. So what you can do is go into the test directory by doing a CD and simply hit make, right? And if it if everything's installed correctly, everything's working correctly, the image is created correctly, you should see this output, uh, this output and, you know, these are like some commands that got fired and everything's working correctly right okay so now to the next point which is uh, we would not always be working on the terminal we would also want to edit files so that uh, you know we can try out different experiments and for that we would require vs code so going back to our repository and the readme file we want a way for vs code to connect to the container right so first, uh, let's just go and launch VS Code, which will be available in the applications directory. So VS Code is here. Okay, it's downloaded from the internet. Open it. Right, so we have VS Code launched for the first time here. There are some settings, you know, initial first time settings. I'll just mark all of them as done. Uh, now, what we want to do is install certain extensions and those extensions depend on uh, you know this code um, utility being available and right now if i were to you know first go and open a new terminal so go to terminal options for vs code and then open a new terminal we have a new terminal here if i type code here uh, forget all of this just a moment isn't correct so if i would ju just do code it will you know do well i suppose it is installed uh but just in case uh you know if you, the code hyphen v command doesn't show anything for you then what you will need to do is uh, go to uh, view command palette and from here uh, shell integration right uh, just type shell i n and this should show up and simply with this it says okay shell command code was successfully installed in the path what that does is 
um, it will make this code um, the utility available on the terminal. Uh, for me, it happened to be already uh, you know, integrated in case for you, if it is not, then you would need to uh, follow those steps. Okay, so what I did now is uh, come back to a repository, copy this part of the code. And uh, by the way, notice that there are no extensions installed right now. You know, nothing's installed here. Now let me go ahead and paste all of it here and then hit enter. Close all of this. No. Yeah. If you notice, uh, the extensions are getting installed here live. And we didn't have this initially, but we now see this remote explorer icon. And what we want to do is uh, you know, click on that and it immediately shows up that there is a dev container uh, running. And uh, uh, remember to select the dev containers from this drop down. In my case, it's already showing that there is a container running, but if it doesn't show for you, there should be like a refresh button. Uh, just click that and this will show up. Now, all I have to do is uh, click on this icon here, which then attaches uh, to the running container. It's telling me that, you know, arbitrary code execution is possible. I see, got it. And it will now connect uh, to the container. Great. So now from within the so i know that it is connected to the container because at the bottom here uh, you'll notice that it shows that it is connected to the scene ninja container right and what we now want to do is open the documents directory and this is within the container uh, and then we just say okay right and uh, yeah done so if you now notice uh, let me just show you multiple things at once. So what you should notice is, uh, you know, the files shown here are exactly the same shown here and are exactly the ones also shown here, right? So that is uh, essentially in what we wanted. We wanted to be able to kind of open up these files now you can edit them and all of that. Now the interesting bit is we can again go to the terminal, open new terminal, and we see exactly this terminal available here. So let's just again go into the test and then do a make. And as we can see, now things are working. So if you have this much going for you, um, exactly how it is on my screen, then congratulations, your setup is now, uh, you know, uh, same as ours and you should be able to try out any future experiments uh, and the code that we upload on this repository and you should actually also be able to try out your own experiments so thanks for staying stick uh, staying around and uh, see you next time bye, -bye.